Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. Um, yep. So what we're going to do is that we're going to restart from the beginning this time, but we're going to go more deep into the grammar. So sorry that some of the information will be like, I read this, but I yeah. thought this would okay. make, make the most sense. Yep. <clears throat> First off, I have um, no, nine, and e, and, you know, no connects between nouns and not and e are both used to connect between adjectives. Um, specifically, some adjectives are e adjectives and some are not adjectives. A um, e adjective will almost always have an e right afterwards, like takai has an e at the end, while not adjectives will have nothing or will have a na written afterwards. A what, sir? Um, so, um, no, na, and ni, mm -hmm. these all connect um, two things together in order to describe the second item. Okay. Example. No, no, no. Yeah. Like, for example, um, imoto no ani, which is from our book, imoto. So, imoto no ani, which is ani, and you're describing her as an imoto. So, with nouns, it's pretty simple. It's just the noun, no noun. However, with adjectives, there's two kinds of adjectives. There's e adjectives, which end with e, and na adjectives, with each, with, which theoretically end with na, but they're normally seen without na. So you only ever see na when it's like being connected to something. So if you see an e at the end, then it's an e adjective and you don't use na. Okay. So could you do me a favor? And uh, let's go through the nouns first. Um, what does none mean? Uh, none. Uh, is that how you say it? Or is it han? The one below? Oh, I don't know, the top one, yeah. Uh, none. I forgot. Uh, none is like nani, which means what? Oh, okay, yeah. How about hon? What does that mean? Hon means a uh, book. Yes. Orenjiro. Which is just orange. Yep. Taiyo. Which is just a tie? No? So, no, hiragana. So taiyo means sun. that so what does taiyo mean means son yes how about imoto uh younger sister yes um you I, you probably haven't got this far into the anki deck but do you know what a nawabashigo is i had uh, no i do not it is a ladder specifically a rope ladder because um nawa means rope and bashi comes from hashi like bridge <laughs> so yeah. rope ladder and tree house? Uh, tree house. Yes. What about fushigi? What does that mean? It means mysterious. Yes. Nagai? Nagai, uh, long distance. Yes. Takai? Uh, tall. Yes. Tanoshi? Having fun. Or yes. just fun. So I would like you to pick two nouns to combined together and using no. Okay. Um, how about imoto no, no, that doesn't make sense. Imoto no fushigi. <laughs> no? It doesn't really work that way because fushigi is an adjective. So the thing on the second position is always a noun. Okay. Basically, you're because the this right here is describing the second object, and sometimes nouns can describe a second object. So, so like, so, so no, we have so. these nouns to pick from. Uh, Fushigi no sun. Oh, not sun. Sorry. Uh, so Fushigi, Fushigi is an adjective. Yep. 
And we're looking for nouns. Oh, we're going for the first one. Sorry, yeah, I was going for the bottom. Okay. Um, hun, no. Hon? Oh, hon, sorry. Hon no imoto. And so, hon no imoto. So that would mean your little sister's a book? Oops. Oh, other way around then. Yeah, sorry. Wait. Imoto no hon. That makes sense. Imoto no hon. That would mean a book that belongs to the little sister. And that is yep. a good little example. Theoretically, if you're in a fantasy world, it could be hon no imoto, which would be your little sister's a book. There, there could be a story about that. But in yeah. real life, this is probably more likely to be true. Now, could you do me show me an example of a na adjective with a noun? Um, all right. So can I go in? Takai na. Takai is actually e adjective because it ends with e. So nagai, takai, and tanoshi are all e adjectives. So we actually yeah. only have one na adjective on this list, which is fushigi. Fushigi. So fushigi na taiyo. Nice. Fushigi na taiyo, which is a mysterious sun. Now, can you show me an example sentence with a e adjective? Mm. Let's see. Nagai. Uh, nawa, what is that? Nawa bashigo. Nice. Nawa bashigo. Perfect. Yes. A long rope bridge. Nice. Yep. So right over here, um, I would like you to tell me, right here is exactly what you did. Nagai nawa boshi. Um, I would like you to tell me what does this word right here, what does this phrase mean? Uh, takai tsui house. So tall tree house. Yes. Nice. And can you tell me what this means? Uh, fushigi na tsuri house. So mysterious tree house. Yep. And um, what does uh, this guy mean? Uh, nan no han. So what book? Yes. Perfect. And we already did that. Uh, so now we're doing something a little bit harder. Um, do you know what omoshiroi means? Omoshiroi means either interesting or funny. From yes. what I know. And how about daisuki? It means, so dai is just very like, uh, yes. ski is like, so very like. Very like. So next is soul, which is why I said this was hard. Do you know what soul is? So, I mean, I hear it a lot, but I don't really know what it means. So, so is kind of like saying kind of, I would say in speech. Um, and it has lots of different meanings. So over here, I have an example, which is omoshiro so na hon. And so, as you can see, is a na adjective. And, um, and moshiroi is an e adjective, but so is interesting that it can connect E adjectives to make them into a new na adjective basically by killing the e part of it so it becomes emotional right. soul and now this turns into it looks interesting emotional soul na because have you actually read the book is would be the question here and if you have read the book you could say emotional hon but if you haven't read the book and you don't know for sure if it's interesting then you have to say emotional soul na hon so yeah, okay. So what does that mean right over here? Omoshiro so na hon. So it looks interesting, but since you haven't actually read it yet, you you're guessing or assuming it's interesting. Absolutely. And next is this. What does this mean? Uh hon ga daisuki uh, na otoko no ko. So the son or the boy little boy likes books or yes. really likes books he really likes books he loves books perfect yep 
So now we have the first line, pretty easy. You already said this earlier, but let's just do it real quick. What does this say? Uh, fushigi uh, Natsuri House. Yes. And what does it mean? Mysterious tree house. Yes. And now we're going to be learning about te farm. Te farm has a bunch of meanings. And right now we're going to be looking at the meaning that means doing something currently. All right. Is um, te farm. So I have a little song, which is what um, normally like I remember when I was in college, they made us listen to the song. Personally, I didn't like the song, but lots of people found it useful. So we're going to play it anyway. Well, that's the te- <laughs> that's the te- catchy. Uh, and that's why a lot of people like it because it they like remember the song and it helps them know how things conjugate because things with the ru, tu, or u ending end with the te like noru becomes notte and things like that so i was wondering oops so right at the top, we have a little bit of a key right here. Could you change yomu, which is a, in the dictionary form, into the te form for me? Yomu, okay. Uh, so it'd be yotte. So that's a really good guess, but it ends with mu. Where is mu on the little um, key sheet? Oh, it's the fourth line. Yeah, I just looked at the U. So it'd be uh, yonde. That sounds more natural. Yeah. That does sound more natural. How about oboiru? Oboiru. Uh, it'll be oboite. It's actually oboite, but without a de. So it's not oboite, it's just oboite. I don't have any. Oboite. Of the, okay. I don't have any right now, any of the tricky ones that have the actual u ending. Wait. You're right. It says it says the do right here. <laughs> so I see why that would uh, be confusing. I didn't double check that key. I quickly grab. Um do if it ends with a do and it's not like a special rue, which you don't have any special rues on this page, rue gets mm-hmm. dropped and it just turns into te. So that's what that is. <laughs> so right here, oh oh boy te, the do just gets dropped. It's not none of the te. So I'm okay, sorry. yeah. I didn't check. <coughs> um, how about osai, osairu? Osairu. Osairu. Um, it ends with the root, so osaite. Yes, osaite. Um, do you know what um oboite means? Oboiru. I do not. I forgot. It means um to remember. Um, sometimes oh, you can yeah. you force yourself to remember something. Like someone say like, avoid oh, they'll get, which is like, remember yeah. me. Or uh, they'll say like, I'll remember this. So it means like to remember. How about osairu? Uh, osai. Does that mean slow? Oh, no, sorry. That's osoi. Yeah, really. Osai. So this is not a common word. So if you're like looking at it, it's like it is a common word. Like I see it a lot in books, but it's not like. It's not like in Genki. <laughs> As like oh, in okay. Genki. I don't know why it's not. It's like they didn't have good example sentences for it. But it means to push something in, in this context. Like the pushing up glasses, for example. Um, how about kansatsu shiru? What does that mean? Kansatsu shiru. Yeah, and that I've got no clue. Oh, so I haven't actually means, heard that one. Um, it means to observe something. Kansatsu shiru. Oh, this is from our last lesson too. Yeah. Uh, Izen o kansatsuru, which was to observe nature. Now, kansatsu ends with suru, so it's a little bit of an irregular pre- way it changes to te form. Do you know how it changes? Uh, so, kansatsu shimashita no. Yeah, shitte. Is it? 
Oh, she did. It, it, it turns into she did. So she must she must is um, past tense must form, and we're doing the te. But yes, it has the she is what it turns into because it's special. How about skip this? Skip the Actually, no, suru would be the same thing. So, skip shimashita. No, sorry, skip shita. Yeah, it's not shimashita. We're doing te form. So, shimashite. Yeah, shimashite. Now, how about kiku? How does that change? Uh, kite. Kite. Nice long e. Perfect. Yeah, those are all te forms. And now, um, let's see. Uh, I just said that as like showing that we know how to do it. Wait, no. <laughs> now I wanted to do um, iru. So you add iru to te form, and all to make it mean that it's the currently doing action. For example, yonderu, yonderu. Or oboeteiru. They all, it's just the te form plus iru. Not complicated at all. You can kind of think of it as iru, like adding ing to things. Okay, the doing tense. Got it. Yeah. Um, so now, right over here, I was going, you know what o does in a sentence? So it makes uh, the noun the direct object. Yes, exactly. Um, you know, let's uh, go through the vocabulary real quick. What does megane mean? Sorry, what was that? What does megane mean? Megane. Yes. Megane means glasses. Yes. How about shizen? Shizen, uh, quiet? Oh, no, really that's a close. Word. There's a word that sounds almost exactly like that that does mean quiet. In this case, it means nature. So sometimes they might use it to mean quiet. I think when they're like, yeah, you know, it's all nature. There's no cars or anything, but it's like Shizuka would be quiet. Yeah. Um, how about Namai? Namai means your name or sorry. No, just means yeah, name. your name. Um, could you make me a sentence? Um, well, not a total sentence, but like um, a an example of using O. You could make it a full sentence if you want, but we just need the noun, the O, and the verb. All right, so. Um, oni chan o <clears throat> yomu. Mm, that's a little interesting. So, how are we reading the Big Brother? Mm. Oh, because I didn't really say that the brother's reading. Uh, wow. How do I do that? Hmm. What What would the brother be reading? Oh, he'd be reading a hon. Hon, yep. So, onichan wa hon no yomu means brother reads books. The old text of the drag object, which in this case is the book. So this means the verb connects O to what is being affected by the verb, not who is doing the verb. Could you do me a favor and use osairu, which means to put something in a sentence? Uh, osairu, okay. So, onichan hon o osairu. Oh, so onichan, he's pushing off a book. Ochan, yep. Onichan wa? Home. Oh, osairu. Nice. Um, totally. Great. Um, that's what we'll do that for now. Do -do -do. Oh, yes. So do you remember when you make something more casual, what happens to iru and like yondeiru? Uh, you just drop it. What exactly do you drop? The so yondeiru just become yonde or yonde. So what happens so the ru. is only the e is dropped, only the vowel. So ru is oh, okay. kept the same, so it becomes yonderu. So you kind of almost hear it, 
But you don't say yonde iru, yonde ru, yonde ru. And the same with oboite ru, osate ru. And can you do the kansatsu version for me? Uh, kansatsu. Kansatsu deru. Kansatsu shitteru. Oh, I lost the she, yeah. Kansatsu shitteru. Yeah, shitteru. Nice. And do you remember how we do past tense for things? Past tense, was that the, uh, was it suru? Uh, so suru is dictionary from. What, what past tense is, is actually adding a ta to the end of most sentences. So you cannot drop the do and you do ta. So yonde ita means I was reading in the past. Yonde ita. Could you do that for me for oboite iru? Oboite iru. Oboite iru. That. Yep, avoid date that. Perfect. Now, what if you're talking about something that happened in the past and you're being casual? What would you say then for osoi deiru? So it'd be osoi deiru. Actually, osoi deita. Osoi deita. Oh, osoi deita. Oh, because it's da at the end. Yes. So osoi deita. All right. Perfect. And now we have our next line. Please read it. Um, Oni chan, a nan no han yo, a yon de tano. Yes. Oni chan, nan no homo, yon de tano. And just a little refresher no is just a little vocal question mark, a lot like ka, but it tends to be more seeking clarification rather than asking direct questions. Got like it. he's asking the clarify, nan no hon. She's not like asking him to do something, if that makes any sense. Yep. So what exactly does this say? So, Oni-chan, big brother, what book are you reading? Yes. And is this like very casual or is this like normal speech? No, no, no. It's casual because the eyes dropped. The eyes dropped and we're using no. No is like only in casual speech. Ka is oh, okay. what you use in a little bit more polite speech. Yep. And you also will drop it like no as well in casual speech. Uh, no is like a little bit slightly, like a tiny bit, a little bit more feminine and has a more, as I said, clarification kind of thing. So over here, as like an example sentence I got online was, Isho ni omatsuri ni iku? That would be a colloquial way to ask, would you like to go to the um, festival with me? So you would not use no here because you're asking someone to do something with you. <laughs> um, so over here, I kind of just was um, wondering, do you know what wa and ga is when it's a particle? So what basically marks the subject and ga marks a new subject? Yes. Ga also kind of marks importance. I would say, which is when something's new, it's more important. So it, it, so not only when something's new, sometimes they'll also be used to be like, it is Tanako who did something or rather than somebody else. Um, yes, uh, we don't need that, you know that perfectly. Oop. So now I have, <laughs> we're going through lots of things. Um, mass form, it's interesting because I feel like Oh, wait, never mind. We're, we're okay. So now we're doing mass form. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So the way mass form works is that it's a little bit more complicated. So right here we have yomu. And what mass form does is that you, so you, so you know, mu ends with M U, right? Yep. And right here we have me. And um, what happens is that it basically, if there's a vowel at the end, we add an e there instead and take out the u when we add mus. Unless it is a do verb, in which case we just drop the do and add mus. Um, for example, what is osairu if you add it to mus form? Osaimas. Uh, or sorry, osaimas. Yes. 
how about what would be kiku in um mass form uh won't be kikima kikimasu yep kikimasu and must form is a little bit more polite than um, uh, this form. And the reason why I'm teaching must form is that it's good to know must form so you know what a stem of a verb is. So a stem of the verb is this part when you drop mas. So yomi would be the stem form of yomu. What is the stem form of oboidu? Uh, it would be oboi. Yes. What is the stem form of kikimas? Kikimas. It would be uh, kiki. Yes. So that's how that works. Um, and sudu is, as I said before, was a little bit weird. So it becomes shimas rather than sudu, which you basically already know because you remembered shimashita. Um, we'll skip that. You know every word. So the reason why I taught that, as I told you before, was because I wanted to go over and get our stem form out of here. So mm -hmm. nagara, do you remember what nagara does? Uh, nagara means at the same time. Yeah, perfect. So nagara is formed by adding the stem form to, to nagara. So yomu is yomi and yomi, ma, no, yomi nagara. So while reading. So since you know that so well, I'm going to skip. I am going to draw a square on the screen so you can't cheat. <laughs> okay. Can you do me a favor and um, use nagara with osaimas. Uh, osaimas. Mm -mm. So, how would that work? Oh, boys. No, yes. Nagara. Um, so we're doing osaimas, which is this guy. So nagara is stem plus nagara. Oh, stem plus nagara. So that would be osai nagara. Yes, osai nagara. Perfect. And can you do kikimas for me? Uh, kiki nagara. Yes. And now I'm going to give you a sentence for you to do in Japanese while pushing his what? So, okay. Big brother. This is kind of weird to say in English. While pushing his glasses is the sentence. Big brother while pushing his glasses. So that would be Oni. Okay, that's fine. Oni chan. Uh, oh, no, sorry, that's not how it works. No, that, that is. Megane? So it does start with okay. Oni chan. What particle goes there? Oni chan wa. Yes. So Oni chan wa. Mm -mm -mm, while pushing his glasses. No, no, that doesn't work. Nagara megane. So megane, what does that mean? Uh, megane means glasses. Megane. megane. And what particle would go to glasses? Because are glasses doing the pushing or are they being affected by being pushed? They're being affected. So it'd be oh. Yes. And what is the verb? It is... Mm -mm -mm. Osai. Yes. And then we add what to that? Negara. Nagara. Or nagara. Nagara. So, so the phrase I want you to say was, Oni-chan wa megane o osai nagara. Which means, big brother while pushing his glasses. <laughs> yeah. Could you read that for me real quick? Uh, the same sentence? Yes, the exact same sentence. Oni-chan wa megana. Uh, nagara. So you said osoi. It's osai. Yes, osai nagara. Perfect. So now we have our next sentence. Uh, actually, before that, um, I wanted to explain ni a little bit. So ni is kind of like towards. So it's a little different 
because oh because like what she'd be owing here would be um like the words she says so she so the um that's what would get an o basically um you you wouldn't really say that in japanese but that's what an o would get attached to it would be what she was asking but ni is the direction of which the question is being asked to <laughs> so you can think of like so toward is kind of what ni means toward so what does this say then uh imoto niga sorry no what is that two lines it's uh, ni right yes so ah ni oh long ni ah ni imoto ani ga oh what happened to uh, the particle which one imoto ani imoto no ani oh I completely missed it imoto no ani ga uh, skip, uh, shinagara. Okay, um, jacky, jack, uh, nikata, nikita. Kita. Make sure it's a Kita. long e, because Japanese long vowels are different words. <laughs> Ew. Because a kita, for example, would mean to cut something. So, yep. while skipping, Annie cuts Jack. Kawaii. Oh, no. Kawaii, so no koto. <laughs> so what does this mean? Uh so the little sister's brother, older brother, mm. skips Shinagara. So he skips while Chaku. So ga. Kita. What is ga? It marks a new subject or well, important new subject is ani. Right? Ani. So, so the brother is a subject. So ani, the long ni, ani. You think of ani. Ani. This is right here is ani. Yep. So this is ani, and it's written in katakana. What is katakana uh, normally used for? Uh, usually for foreign words. Yeah. So ani and jack our names, our foreign names, the names Annie and Jack, but they've been Japaneseified. So Annie, that's why it's Annie, Imoto no Annie, which is Annie, who is the has who is described as a little sister. So it's not um the big brother, the brother's sister. <laughs> so it's Annie, the little sister, is what that's saying. Yeah. Imoto no ani ga skip. Skip shinagara. So she skips while Jack Nikita. So ni, what is ni telling us? Uh, ni was, was it tor? Yes. So this is kind of almost like having an O here in that Jack is not doing anything. The subject is Annie. Annie is doing the kita and she's also doing the skip. However, toward Jack, she's doing the kita. Do you remember what kita means? It's a hard Does it mean to disappear. So that's kieta. Kieta. Kieta with the e sound is to disappear. Kita comes from kiku, which has this kanji right over here. It's composed of mon like gate and mimi as in ears what do you think it means ears and what was the other one gate gate and ears yes that is a very strange combination um, it makes sense as like a metaphor so like opening ears yes so it means to listen ew it can also mean to ask. And the only way to tell is by context. So over here, I'm letting you know from the context that he's asking Jack. The reason for this is that in the last line we had, which was a while ago, 
He said, Oni chan, nan no no And that was a question. Who asked this question? Duck. Uh, Oni chan, nan no ho no no? Who asked this question? Oh, that's the subject, which we know it's the sister. So, so this is, yes. We know it's the sister because Oni chan means big brother. So big brother would not be saying, big brother, what book are you reading to the little sister? That wouldn't make any sense because he's the yeah. big brother. And he wouldn't be saying that to himself because that would be even weirder. So because of that, we know that and that while Jack is listening, we know by context that this must mean to ask because the subject is Annie who just asked Jack, what book is he reading? So yes, that, that right there is very complicated because it's very much context-based. Um, theoretically, Jack could be listening here, but he's not. He is being asked a question. Um, uh, it, generally, um, if you see ni, you can guess it is the question form of it. While if you see o, you can guess it is the listening form of it, but that's not a hard and true rule. There are exceptions to that. Okay. But um, if, if you were had no idea of the context and you guess, I think it's like 70% chance you'll be right. Nice. <laughs> Just, um, as like an example where you'd be wrong would be right over here, where to hear something weird, kikoiru, versus, um, yes. So this right here, going with the na, I told you na means toward. So for example, ni kiku meant um, like toward Jack. So then we have this new word called katamuku. Do you remember what that meant, katamuku? Katamuku, I do not. So katamuku in this context means to set. Directly, it means kind of like to tilt. So if you kind of were imagining like the sun's like this and on like a dial, the dial kind of starts tilting as the sun goes like bye-bye. Right. So what direction, if we said nishi sora ni katamuiteru, are we tilting in? Uh, we'd be tilting it west. Yes. So that's why we have ni here. Because the sun is not necessarily being affected, is not being necessarily affected by the tilting action. It's just that is the direction in which it is tilting in. So altogether, what does this say? Um, orange, so orange, iro no taiyu, so orange sun, yes. nishi no, so west, sora, the sky, katamute iru, katamute iru, katamu is the direction, mm -hmm. so the direction the sun's setting is the west, or west, yes. something along those lines. Yes, exactly. And is this action currently happening, already happening, or will soon happen? Uh, so it's happening right now. Yes. What if this was a sentence? Could you read it for me once more? Uh, How has the meaning changed? So it became a ta, which means it's now the past. Yeah. So the sun has already set to the yes. west. That's exactly what it means. Perfect. Uh, now we have koko, soko, and asoko. Do you know what those mean? Koko means here, soko means there, and what's the last one? Asa asoko. means over there. Yep. Just was checking that. So what does this sentence mean? Uh, koko wa americano. Uh, Pennsylvania. Mm, ah, shoe. Ah, shoe. Oh, I read the katakana. Shu. Yeah. So this is America, though, rather, this is Pennsylvania in America. Yes. And shu is state, I think. Yep, it is state. Perfect. And now we have a new grammar point, which is N to you N. For example, Buki to you inu. 
So what does toyu mean? Toyu, I do not know. Oh. So toyu is a way to say a name of something. So buki, toyu inu, means a dog named buki. That's why I have a little picture of buki with a sign having watashi wa buki. So buki saying this. I am buki. Buki, toyu inu. Could you do me a favor and tell me tell me how to say um, the emoto named Annie? How would you say that? Emoto named Annie. So, emoto. Oh, there's already a to. So, emoto. Emote. Emoto. To you. Emoto. So, emoto. You. So, so there's no reason for the to to go by by. We got e mo to to e mo to to you e mo to to iru. Yeah, you sir. So, so what, what then goes over there? We want to say uh, little sister's name, right? Sure. So toy. Toy? We already added the toy. So her name is actually Annie. Now, this right here says Annie named Imoto. Imoto to you, Annie. So Annie, Annie named Imoto. Imoto. Okay. So something's wrong about it. How do we fix it? Uh, do we just swap the two? Yep. Annie. To you, Imoto. That'd be the sister named Annie. Now, could you do the brother named Jack? And right here we have the Annie that you really like. The one, the correct. I usually say, yeah. That so would that would be Jack. So Jack Toy uh, to Annie. Toy? Jack and Annie. Hmm. Hmm. How do I get the name in there? How, how do you do that? So we we're, Jack is correct. Jack and To is correct. So what are you missing here to say the brother named Jack? Jack Jack Tono Tono It's you Do you know what you means by itself? To say or utter. Yes. So in this case to say and other is kind of being used as to be called. So Jack do you And then what's big bro what's brother? Big brother in Japanese. Uh ani. Yes, ani. So that would be Jack to you ani. Could you say that for me? Jack to you, Annie. Yes. Now, I would like you to say um, the city named book. The city named book. Okay. You? That would be Hon Toy. Yes. Toy? Hon. No, it was Hon To. So Hon To you. Uh, shu. Yes. So shu can mean city, but in this case, I wanted machi. Oh, machi. Shu kind of goes luck. like shu kind of goes like at the end of like the title. So it'd be like hon shu would be the city hon. <laughs> the city hon. The city yeah, hon. doesn't make sense. Honshu. But uh, right here it's hon to you machi. The machi named hon. Perfect. And do you remember what X to um, Y was? In which case, case, these are both nouns. That would mean X and Y. And that's actually, it. yeah, X and Y. And how is it different from X, Y, X, ya, Y? How is it different? So that would be X and Y, but there's other things as well, which yes. are not mentioned. Exactly. Perfect. And can you read this sentence for me? Um, uh, Jack to Annie, what? 
Um, Fukotsuku. Futsu. What? Fuko. Fukotsu. Fukotsugu. So, is this guy big or small? I'm guessing that's small because it small. wouldn't make sense to be big. Well, we got. Who's this guy? Fuko. Yeah. Fu. So, Cole in katakana looks very similar to that, but it's not close. Is it a ro? Yes. Furo. Furogu. Okay, that makes more sense. Furogu. Kireku. Ki. Ki is the long one, isn't it? Ki looks like that. Oh, ku. Yep. So, koriku. Perfect. And altogether, what, what does that katakana name be? Um, That would be Frog Creek. Yes, Frog Creek. So let's continue the sentence then. <laughs> uh, to you, sorry, no, to you mas, uh, machi no shogakuse, shogakuse. To you machi shogakuse. So in the town of Pennsylvania. Nice. Or not Pennsylvania. Oh, that no, because of context, yeah. That is context. Pennsylvania. There and then Shogakuse, which so, was so first, kindergarten. Or kind of. So primary school. It includes kindergarten. But yeah, primary school is a better way to say it. What if this is all we had? Jack to Ani wa Shogakuse da. What does that mean? So that would just mean that Jack and Ani are uh, little kids. Yes, they're specifically they're elementary school students, primary school students. Mm. So, so it just lets you know that they're not homeschooled, maybe. <laughs> I guess. Next is what does this mean on its own? Furogu Creek to you machi. Uh that would mean the name of the city is Frog Creek. Yes. So now right over here, we have a little no connecting machi and shogakse. What does that mean? What does that make this mean? It would make it possessive. So the town's kindergarten, or sorry, exactly. primary school. Exactly. So it's saying Jack and Annie are elementary school students of the town called Frog Creek. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. So here's a funny one. What does this sentence say now? I changed one part of it. Uh... Let me see. Jack to Annie wa Frog Creek toy machi shio gakse tsuta. That's so tsuta. That's oh, tata. Shio gakse tata. Frog Creek toy machi no shio gakse datta. Datta. That's a little ta. You wear ta so, things normally? Makes it um past tense. Yes. So then the tata. So they were in primary school. Yes, they were. This kind of almost has a connotation that they died almost, or oh. like it, like if you're reading a book and there's like they were like it kind of had like almost gives that connotation. But theoretically, it could be that they used to go to this school here. They used to be elementary school students, but it seems odd that you would specify that they were elementary school students of Frog Creek, unless they died. <laughs> yeah. They were once, um, like some, something happened. Theoretically, they could have became Otona, but like you think then they'd be like um, high school students as well. Like, why are we stopping at Shogakse? What happened? Yeah. What big event happened? So now we're gonna reread all the lines we've gone over and you're gonna translate them for me as you go. So one line at a time, which ends. Um, 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 um. I'm guessing the first one. Okay, yeah. Uh, fishigi na tsuri house. So mysterious tree house. Yes. Oni chan, oni chan, nan no han yo, uh, yonde ita, yonde ita no. So, Big Brother, what book are you reading? Yes. Imoto. 
妹の兄がスキップしながらあジャックに聞いた。聞いた。そう。妹兄が。そう。ビッグブラザーズ。Brothers, skip. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh no, 兄。Annie or Annie? Annie, sorry, yeah, Annie. So her name is Annie and she skips while Jack Gita, while Jack listens.、Mm, really? Or、good. no? That's a good question. That's, good,、uh, that's a really good guess. So Ni means toward. So toward Jack, Annie, Gita. Because Annie is the subject. So she is doing、mm-hmm. the verb. So she's listening to Jack. So theoretically, it could mean this. But what happened just the sentence before?、Uh, oh, we know that she's the one asking. Yes. So in this case, this must be she asked. Because it's in a past tense. And just a second ago, we heard her ask a question. But grammarly, theoretically, could be listening. But me, I'd say 70% of the time is used with listening. I listen,、uh, I mean, with asking. I asked Jack rather than I listened to Jack about 70% of the time. So、yep. if you guess, guess that it is asking. Asking. Yep. Go next slide.、Uh, orange, so orange, iru no taiyo. 西の空に傾っている。So the sun ends with a t e i r So the sun's setting、yes. from the sky to the west.、Yes. And that's happening presently. Yes. And what color is the sun? Orange. Yes. And what is this Hiragana character pronounced as?、Aru. And how about this guy? Ro. Nice. So iro rather than iru. <laughs> Oh, it'll, yeah, it'll. color. So, orange, it'll. So, orange color. Okay. Um, Cocoa, America, no, Pennsylvania, Shio. This shio? is Shio. Shio? Shio. Yes. There you go. Um, this is Pennsylvania in America, and this is the town of Pennsylvania. Yep. This here is Amer- this, this place is th- this in the state of Pennsylvania. Of, it's one of America's Pennsylvania state. Yeah. <laughs> Next part.、Uh, Jack to Annie wa、uh, p- p- f- ro- f- rog- oh, Frog Creek.、Uh, to to ir- so to i- Yes. Jack to Annie wa Frog Creek to you machino shogakseda. So Jack and Annie are currently in the primary school of Pennsylvania. Perfect.、Uh, what is the name of, this, of, this, of the school of the city in Pennsylvania that they're in?、Uh, Frog Creek. Nice, perfect. And we have time for one more. No new grammar in this guy, just a lot more katakana practice. Yeah, <laughs> let's,、okay. do one, let's do it one at a time. I will start, but I'll, I'll do this when you get it wrong.、Mm-hmm. So, i ge a no do. So it looks a lot like a get. Oops, sorry. Thanks. Get though has a little bit of a longer overhang. So if this was like that, it would be get, but it doesn't have that. So who is it? It has to be good then. Yes. Igua no don. Igua no don. Next guy. Sute go sa uru su. Perfect. Stegosaurus, not that one. Um, Kyorio, Kyorio, Bio, Kyo, Kyori, 
。恐竜。Yes. 恐竜。恐竜の王者。王者。そう、King。Yes. アーテイラノサウルス。Perfect. タイアノサウルス。Okay. This right here is actually theoretically a small t, so it'd be like t. It's just that in Japanese, t and i make chi normally. So it's t ra no so ra so rather than te. Oh, okay. I just didn't have it um, obnoxiously small because you have to like manually do that because this is a little bit smaller, but you have to be like really used to Japanese. This one right here shows it a little bit better that、yeah. it's, it's almost. It's It's a little bit smaller, but、uh, the, it's very easy when looking at it like this to think this is a little bit bigger.、Uh, what does k y o r y u mean? k y o r y u So it means era. It does not mean era, but that is a good guess since Oja means king.、Um, so what is a tira, <laughs> Tyrannosaurus? What is it? It's a dinosaur. So, k y o r y u is a dinosaur. Oh, okay. Just going with stuff. Ryu, sorry.、Uh, Ryu, just by itself, means dragon. And Taki, it looks like this means waterfall. Does that、oh, wow. help? I don't know, but it's interesting. Yeah. k y o r y u Hi. So, now we're back to Toen. To you n. What did that mean? N toy n. So n、uh, something n. So what does buki to you inu mean then?、Uh, so you know the dog's buki toy. So the book, no, the dog's name is buki. Yes, exactly. So what we're doing, so buki to you inu is the polite way to say this. But if you're talking to your friends and family, you probably wouldn't say to. Instead, you'd say te. As in,、oh, te. for example, right over here, I have me talking saying, Buki te you inu wa uchi no inu da, which is the dog named Buki is my family's Buki. Oh, okay.、Um, I didn't double check if people would say uchi when they did that. <laughs> But yeah, the dog named Buki. So te. Is how someone would say to you, but are referring, but are talking and they're being casual.、Um, do you know what sono, kono, and ano mean? Sono, kono, and ano. They're all just ways to say, or they're just words that you say when you're thinking.、Mm, so, ano is said when you're thinking. So, that is actually good、um, connecting there. Ano is definitely said. but it, Sono is not really said, and neither is kono. Only ano is really used that way. But these are actually kind of related to the koko, soko, and asoko that you already knew. So the way how these work is that you're attaching a noun here. For example, this is me, and this is you, and we have a Pikachu right below you. So you would say, kono Pikachu, and I would say, Ano Pikachu. So it's basically adding a, it's saying this or that, but it's with a no, which connects some、um, nouns, remember? Yep. So it's kind of like adding like, Koko no, Pik- like, Koko no Pikachu,、uh, which、oh, would be、okay. like, okay, in English, like, here's Pikachu. <laughs> the yeah, Pikachu this Pikachu. Here, but it's very much the no version of that. So, Ano Pikachu would be that one way over there. But yeah, they're pretty easy to guess because if you know what Koko means and Sono means and Asoko means,、yeah. it's just the front part with no added to it instead, and the other parts drop. So now,、um, sorry, I'm just going to see how much more I have of that. Yes. Okay. So now we're looking at this ending of words, which is Nda. And this is casual. Someone speak you when they use nda. The polite、mm-hmm. form is no this, in case you were wondering, but we're just focusing on nda. For example, penguin wa soro o toba nai nda. 
Do you know what a penguin is? I do not. Penguin. Oh. Penguin is penguin in English. Oh, penguin. Penguin. Eh. Okay. What is something that penguins cannot do? Sora o to wa. So, what can't they do? Uh, what does Sora mean? Sora? It means the sky. Yes. So, penguins, what are they known for not being able to do in the sky? Uh, fly, I guess. So, tobu, which is the dictionary form of toba nai, means to fly. So, toba nai means no, no flying. So, penguin wa toro o toba nai in, toba nai in da. It means that the person saying this has just found out penguins cannot fly. It's a it's used when you discover a brand new concept. So not like you lost your phone and you're like, oh, bitsketa. You would not use nda. It's very much okay. a brand new concept. Like <sighs> your mind is blown. Like, whoa, penguins completely new. Have yeah. Flies, but but they birds, they have little flappy wings. Um, could you do me a favor and read the sentence below? Uh yokryu to uh toy you. Yes, I had this um the text got a little cut off. I didn't check that. So just showing you right here, this atta is past tense and it should have been um ita <laughs> which would have, <laughs> ita, ita. Itanda would have been the correct sentence so <laughs> pretend it didn't say ata over here <laughs> yep <laughs> um so what does kyo do you mean kyo you i completely forgot that word oh man it's at the back of my head it has to do with that tea classroom oh that's, no that's, a good guess. that's something else kyo you uh, Ryu means dragon. So Kyoryu would be a uh, dinosaur. Yes, Kyoryu. And Yokoryu, do you Kyoryu? What does that part mean? Yokoryu. So unnamed dinosaur. Mm. Yes, the dinosaur is named Yokoryu. So Yokoryu doesn't mean unnamed. Yoku comes from the word tsubasa tsubasa you probably don't know what it means but do you know what a tsubasa is i do not so tsubasa means wings um it's not used as often as hane which also means wings slash feather but tsubasa is kind of like the more like almost fancy way to say it um for example there's like an anime called tsubasa <laughs> oh okay so it's called like wings but I don't think they'd ever would name an anime Hane. That's like too boring. <laughs> so Yokoryu is made out of the word of wings and dragon. So what kind of dragon do you think? I mean, wings, <laughs> it is actually wings plus dragon. What is that? What type of dinosaur is called wing dragon, do you think? If you had a guess. Uh, pterodactyl. Uh, yes. Exactly. You know your dinosaurs. So I always think it was fair, fair. I was like the one with the P in its name. That's yeah. not my Pterodactyl, exactly. You know your dinosaurs. You know, like you're old when you're like, what are the dinosaur names? I used to know them. Um, yeah. So we're going to end once we hit the last part of this. So now we're learning cool. Kara and Made. Do you know what that is? Uh, hara and made? Uh, I do not. Hara and made. Hara and made. Not ha. Oh, sorry. Kara. Yes. Kara and, kara made. and made. Do you know what those mean? Uh, like karada? Mm, it, it sounds similar, karada, but it has no relation at all with each other. So a sentence that might use kara and soko and made would be koko kara soko made, which means 
from mm. here to there. For example, I love you so much from koko kara to soko made. <laughs> I think yeah. something someone might say. Um, um, a better sentence that uses kara and made is this one. So jugyo means class. Do you know what ji means? The ji on its own? No. So ji, this, with this kanji right there, basically means o'clock in English. It's like, it's like hour. Oh, okay. But like, we don't really say like hour out loud. We say o'clock in English. So could you do me a favor and read this sentence out loud for me? Uh, kono jokyo ku, oh, jokyo arisatan. Kono jokyo jikara, joji. Let's do it a little bit slower. So we got kono. What's this character right here? Ju. Nice. Oh, small. Jukyu. Jukyu. Kono jukyo. Who's this guy right here? Wa. Or haba. Yes. You're right yes, by wa. wa. You know it's a wa because we have kanji right here and the no kanji. So we know it's a particle. So kono jukyo wa. Wa. Kujikara. Yes. Which means kujikara. Not too sure. Hi. So ku means nine. Ki. Oh, okay. Yeah. Kuji means nine hours. So kujikara. What's the next part? Uh, jujimas or jujimatte Yes. So what is? Do you know what juji means? Juji. I do not. So ju means ten. And G, we've talked about G. Do you remember what I meant? Uh, it means like hour, I'm guessing yes. 10 o'clock. It does. So, kono jugyo wa kuji kara juji made des is um, this class is from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. Oh, okay. Which is for me. We have different time zones. For you, it's like five to 6 a.m., I think. <laughs> Now nah, we changed it, so it's a lot sooner for me, I guess. Oh my! But yeah, so kara. What is kara being attached to? Kara is being attached to kuji, so nine o'clock. Yes, and it basically means from, and made means until. So fr so kara is like the starting point, and made is the end point. Ending point. Okay. Okay. So now. We're at our full, our last sentence. Oh, also in case, in case you forgot, um, if you go an noun, no, then particle, this means the no is being connected to another noun that has been dropped. But that's only so, if okay. a noun before the no. So in this case, the context we're talking about kyoryu. So we know that the thing that's been dropped is kyoryu. So now you can read it. <laughs> Um, egg, egg, wa, noto, no, don, don, uh, sute, go, sour, su, su, okay, stegosaurus, um, curiu, curiu, no, curiu, yeah, curiu, no, you look the same, curiu, oh, curiu. Yeah. Kyoryu. Kyoryu no oja. Teira no sorusu. Perfect. So, uh, sore gara. Okay, sore gara no jitai. No? Uh, sore gara ano. Ano jitai ni wa. So, that would be... You should just read the whole thing and then we can go back. Okay. Uh, sora o tobu yokuryu tsutei. Oh, this is not Yokuryu te. Oh, yokuryu te. Uh, dei no moitanda. Yes. So, my hint for you is it kind of gives things a little bit of pauses between like different concepts. So, yokuryu te you no mo itanda. Because you say moita, that doesn't work. You can't, you can't say moita. That'd be bad. You kind of yep. need to separate it. You need to separate the particle 
from the verb. <laughs> um, oh, eat on the, all right. Right. Uh, so G. Do you remember what G meant earlier when we had Kuji? And G basically means o'clock. Yes. So G dai together means like era or period or some kind of like mm. time, like generation. So ano G dai. What does that mean? Uh ano G dai. So that era. Yes. Sora o tobu? What is that? So fly in the sky. Yes. Or rather sky flying for yep. this context. It's like flying for of the sky. Sky's being affected by the flying. It's it's kind of weird. Um, I've never seen soda o tobu used before. Normally it's like soda de or soda ni or something like that is what you normally see. So it's just interesting. So they just really want, I think, to make it important that you know it's flying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so, sore kara, so, and that, ano jidai ni wa, sore o tobu yoku ryute iu no mo itanda. What does that mean? Ah, uh, sore kara ano jitanda. Okay, so, in that era, mm -hmm. sore kara ano, okay, that era, a dinosaur, which was the, what was that dinosaur? Yoku ryu. <laughs> It was the rocky Uh, oh, Yokuryu. Okay, Yokuryu was flying in the sky and mm. to taint. No, I mixed it up. Where's the previous word? Soro uh, Yokuryu? Yokuryu, yeah. Yokuryu de no mo. So, de mo no? What does that mean? De no mo. So, do you remember what to you meant? For example, buki. To you inu. So it means name in a yes. formal sense. So te is just he the main character is talking right now. He's like, oh yeah, I'm reading this book. It has a yokuryu te you kyoryu inside of it. And it's so cool. Like it's soro tobu. Who cares about the oja when you got the tobu? Yeah. Then it's just itanda. Which I don't know about so, Itanda. Ita, do you know what Ita means? It's from Iru. So being alive? Yes. But now we have Ta. So is it still alive? Oh, so it's, oh, that's past tense, isn't it? Past so tense. it's now dead. So it, okay. it used to live in that time. It so used to be dead. alive. And it's been a long time. But do you know what Nda meant? Unda. The sentence was penguin wa sora o tobe tobanai da. Oh, so like a new concept that's apparently concept. really like, mind boggling. Wow. Wow. They, they, had a dry, they had a dinosaur that could fly, like a humongous flying dinosaur. Like, wow, is what he's basically saying. With that yeah. <laughs> and that is where we're going to stop for today right over there and i feel like this worked better for learning the new concepts right yeah so something i thought that we could do for homework it's, it's up to you if you want to do that or not but um my idea is that maybe you could try explaining oh you already started that Yeah, I saw it an hour before our class. I was like, oh, I've got homework. I didn't know about this. No, this is, this is the homework. So then I tried. To, yeah. So, <laughs> so I did some of this beforehand. Yeah. So the grammar that you learned today, just you I wanted you to explain what you know about it, just to kind of get your thoughts out there. And we can make, and I'll like correct if I notice anything wrong before um, our lesson. And we'll make that into a second Anki deck, which will be our grammar deck. That way, oh, yeah. if you write it yourself, I feel like it helps you like learn it better that way. Yeah, true. So yeah, so awesome. You're, I love that you started it already. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah. I guess I'll be seeing you next week then. Uh, any questions or comments? Uh, for now, no. I mean, I'll rewatch the lesson a couple of times and I'll leave any questions in the page. That sounds perfect. And you can always message me on Discord. <laughs> yep. Well, yeah. Well, have a good day. Bye. Yep. Goodbye.